Welcome to episode 32 of Tales of Yarnia. My name is Hannah, I'm coming to you from Cheltenham in the UK, which is where I live with my other half, Jimmy, and our yellow Labrador, Jonah, who is just sleeping down here next to me, so fingers crossed it will be alright and he will stay sleeping. <laughs> if you've watched before, you'll know Jonah can sometimes be a bit crazy and tries to take over the podcast, but hopefully... He's worn himself out enough. <laughs> anyway, um, social media wise, you can find me as Yarnia Designs on Instagram and Ravelry. And you can also find my knitting patterns available on Ravelry under Yarnia Designs. And I'll include links to everything I talk about uh, just down below. Um, that's where I keep my show notes. So I just find that's easier to just include links to everything just there. So, it's been quite a while since I last spoke to you. It's been, I think, possibly around a month, which is a lot longer than I normally try to podcast. I normally try to do it every sort of two weeks, and that tends to be what works best for me um, and fits into my life. But um, the last time I was going to podcast, I didn't feel very well that day. Um, that was a couple of weeks ago. I just... I'd had like a migraine the previous day and I was just trying to chill out and uh, feel better, ready to go back to work the next day. So I thought podcasting wasn't going to be the most restful um, idea because I tend to podcast, film the podcast in the morning and then edit it throughout the day and the whole process probably takes about eight hours. Um, so it's like a full day's work. <laughs> Um, but I do enjoy it, so um, it, it does take a lot out of me and a lot of time because uh, I like to make sure that it's all done properly. So anyway, a little ramble about podcasting over. Um, I've got quite a bit to show you today. Um, I've got some quite a few new projects um, and we've got a few FOs as well. 
Oh, I've just realised all of the FOs. I don't think you've even seen as whips. <laughs> so <laughs> this is what happens when I don't podcast for a month. I go from having projects that I've cast on, that I haven't even cast on, to then casting them on and finishing them before you've even seen them. So, but I mean, it's not a bad thing. So <laughs> got more to show you. Right. Okay, so the first FO I was going to show you is a present for someone. So Haley, if you're watching, don't watch. I don't think you do watch this, but if you are, then stop. <laughs> um, okay, so the first FO is a flax sweater and it's in the one to two years size and ooh, it's been folded so it's got creases okay so this is a present for my friend's little girl who's just turned two um, and I knit her something pretty much every time she has a birthday or it's Christmas so this time I decided to do a flax sweater which is a pattern by Tin Can Knits on Ravelry I think it's a free pattern um, and they do the complete range of sizes you could imagine. So everything from newborn size up to, I don't know how many XL adult size, but they do like a full range of sizes and it's free. So um, the pattern only specifies, uh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> only specifies using one color, but I decided to just um, make like a nice summery sort of um, color scheme by doing little mini stripes. So I think I did, yeah, I did two rounds of each color in the striping section. And I just saw these colors together and thought, it reminded me of like ice cream colors. And I just thought it was really, really pretty. So the yarn that I've used is Erica Knight for John Lewis. Um, I think it was just DK. I'll include the link down below anyway. Um, I can't remember the colour names. I'm not sure if they had names or if it was just numbers. But um, it looks like it's lemony yellow and then sort of a candy floss pink. Um, this sort of light grey. So, yeah, my main concern is I don't know if it's going to fit her or not. Because she's just turned two and everything I've knit before has always been too big because I think she's um, a bit on the smaller side um, compared to the clothes for her age. Um, so I've gone for the smaller size out of the two. I think it was, you could either do two to three, no, one to two years or two to four years. And I thought two to four sounded like it might be a bit big. So I went for one to two. So I don't know. I hope it'll fit. It won't fit me. So I don't mind if it's too big. I'm just worried it might be too small, but we'll just have to see. So yeah, that's the flax sweater. Um, I'm quite pleased with how the stripes turned out on that. I did slip, I think I did where I joined, where it, sorry, where the, um, end of the round was, I sort of, hang on, let me just move the sleeve, I sort of managed to make it look a bit less of a jog, because when you do stripes in the round, um, you obviously end up with the end of the round being higher up than the start of the round, and you can end up with a bit of a jog, like, I'll show you the sleeves of what it would have looked like, because I didn't, um, slip the first stitch of each stripe on the sleeve so you can see there is a very distinct jog with these stripes there whereas on the body I thought people would more like to see the body the side of the body than the underarm of the sleeve so I slipped the first colour sorry the first 
stitch of each new colour. It has sort of made it a little bit, a little bit more uh, subtle, <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. It's just, just a child's sweater, so it's not a huge deal. So yeah, pleased with that. And the next FO is let's see, Luke. I'll show you this one next. The next one um, is the Bandana Cowl by Pearl Soho. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me just have a sip of my tea. Hmm. And this is the first time I've ever used my hand spun um, in a project. So I spun up some BFL, I think it was, um, which was by Cat and Sparrow UK. And that was the first hand spun I've ever spun, uh, first fibre I've ever spun. And I'd started off do, using the Turkish spindle and then, because I got frustrated that it was much slower than on the spinning wheel, once I got a spinning wheel, I spun up the rest on the spinning wheel. And I thought, it's only my first spin, it's going to be really wonky anyway. So, um, But I'm quite pleased with how it's knit up. Um, I'll show you. So yeah, it's the After the Storm colourway, I think. And yeah, I made the bandana cowl. So it's just sort of folded there. Probably see where it's been folded, yeah, just a bit creased. Um, so I didn't quite have enough yardage for the full pattern. So you start at the bottom here, and then I think it is a free pattern as well. You start at the bottom, and then pretty much all of this triangular bit is worked up in short rows, um, so it does work up pretty quick. And I think I did this in one or two evenings. And um, the only problem with mine is that where I started, the yarn is much finer, much thinner than the yarn at the top. So I ended up being having much chunkier yarn to work with at the top of the cowl, which has then made it a bit bulkier at the top. And yeah, you can see it is much finer at the bottom. It graduates to this big chunky section. So I think the chunkier yarn is when I first started spinning. And then I gradually managed to make it a bit finer. It would have probably been better if I'd started with the chunky bit at the bottom because I think the, the whole idea of the bandana cowl is you have some decreases that make the, this top section a lot narrower than this bit. So it's meant to sort of be narrow here and work its sort of get a bit wider so that it sits nicely on the shoulders. Whereas I think mine is a bit too wide at the top, so it looks a bit gapy. I'm going to try it on. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but I, you see mine's sort of a bit gapy and it's a bit heavy at the top as well, I think, because the yarn is much thicker, but it's, it's not terrible. Like it's, it's a complete, oh, sorry, that was me on the table. It is like a completely wearable garment and it actually fits Jonah as well. <laughs> so it could be a cool dog bandana. <laughs> if I don't wear it. So I don't know if I'm going to be wearing this or not, or if it might be a gift for someone. I'm not too sure. I think the other thing I could do is maybe sew the top bit together a little bit more, just to pull it in a bit, and then it will sit a bit nicer, I think. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts 
in the comments. I don't know. Because as it is, with it sat fully forward, I just feel like there's too much of a gap here. And I don't, I don't like it going like this. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. I mean, I was not expecting great things from my first project out of handspun because the yarn was so thick and thin as well. But I do love the way that it's knit up. I love the way the hands it's sort of got the handspun look to it with the colours. I really like it. So. I'm 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 pretty proud of myself that I've managed to create something out of fibre because it's not something I thought I would manage to do. So yeah, I'm gonna take this off because we're having a bit of a heat wave at the moment. So and I've already got a knitted um, t-shirt on. So <laughs> yeah, I don't need a cowl as well in this heat. So. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you what I'm wearing. <laughs> um, it is a pattern from Pom Pom Quarterly. I can't remember which issue it was. I think it was the summer issue from last year. And it is the Riley Tea. Um, which I don't, I can't remember, is it a pattern by Amy Christoffers? I think it might be a pattern by Amy Christoffers. And it, the whole thing is like garter stripes. Um, it's really interesting construction, the way it's um, created. And um, I just love it. I particularly love wearing it with dungarees. Um, I'll just try and give you a bit of a... Oh yeah, you can see much more of it at the back. Because obviously that's how dungarees work. So, yeah. But yeah, I, I really love it. It's just something really easy to throw on. And... Yeah, the yarns I used are Beehive Yarns is the more pinky colour. See if I can show you. Yeah, the one with um, sort of like pink with like green, speckles of green is Beehive Yarns in the Rose Lichen colourway. And the other colour, which is the dark one, is uh, Vull & Vine Yarns in Dirty On Purpose. So, yeah, I uh, really love it. I love the way these two colours look together as well. So, yay! Yeah, just thought I'd tell you what I'm wearing. <laughs> right, another sip of tea, and then we've got one more FO. I know, I'm so, so excited about this. Don't expect as many FOs next time, <laughs> unless it's been another month, which it should not be. Okay, so my last FO I have to show you, everything is covered in dog hair. I don't let Jonah anywhere near these things, but the dog hair I think just floats around the house. Even though we vacuum and brush him, he's molting at the moment, so he's shedding his winter coat all over the place. Okay, so yeah, last FO is a pair of socks and this is a new design, which I don't think I'd even started the last time I spoke to you. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't remember speaking to you about it or showing it to you. And I will just show you them. So these are the socks. I'll show you uh, one close up. So these are the Peggy socks and these were inspired by the Beehive Yarns Mad Men Club um, which was a three month club she did at the start of the year, uh, January through to March and each skein um, in the club was inspired by a different scene or character from Mad Men which is one of my favourite TV shows. I just love all of their, um, all of the outfits and it's just so, there's no, no other show really like it that I've watched. Um, I just love it. It's so retro and just the style is just, 
I don't know. I just love watching it. Um, and the storyline is great too. Um, so the I've decided to design a different sock pattern with each of the colourways in the Mad Men Club. And each of the sock patterns is inspired by the character behind the colourway, if that makes sense. So this colourway um, was the February colourway. And I think it was called, what was it? Something Serious. And in the picture was Peggy and Don. Um, so, so I've decided to call these the Peggy socks and I designed them with Peggy in mind. Um, I wanted something quite sensible. <laughs> um, I didn't want anything too flowery or fussy. Um, I wanted something that involved straight lines, maybe with a chevron, um, because Peggy tends to wear sort of geometric patterns and a lot of checked patterns and sort of a lot of straight lines. And she's probably, um, she's like focused, professional and um, like the sort of career-focused businesswoman out of the characters, I think, I would say. I mean, everyone probably has their different take on um, characters, but to me, she's sort of the um, one who wants to be treated the same as the men and um, wants to have the same opportunities and do the same job as, the, as any man would be allowed to do. Um, so I thought something quite sensible, I, sensible isn't really a very inspiring word for a sock design, is it? But, <laughs> um, I just wanted it to sort of embody how I see Peggy, if that makes sense. So I've got like a bit of a garter section and the, the chevrons, this is on both sides, by the way. Um, maybe if I show you like this. So this is what the uh, front of the sock looks like. So yeah, some garter and chevrons and then these twisted stitches at the sides. <clears throat> and I've done an eye of partridge heel. Hang on, let me just sort this out. Yeah, we've got an eye of partridge heel which this is the first time I've done an eye of partridge, but I just thought that went quite well with the style of the sock. And I really love knitting a partridge heel as well. And then we've got these little cables, this little cable at the back with some twisted stitches as well. So yeah, this is going to be released next week. But actually no, this weekend. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting confused with the dates. Time is just going faster than I thought. But yes, they are currently in testing and I'm planning to release them either Friday or Saturday this week. So that'll be the, what's it today? It's Tuesday the 23rd today. So in a few days. <laughs> Super exciting. So yeah, this will be the first um, sock design in the collection. And then I will be working on designs for the other two skeins as well, one of which I have started. So, but yeah, I just love it. I love the, this yarn as well. I wanted something that would um, show up in quite variegated yarn. And I think this pattern does because of these, you get like a single line, sort of single strand of colour. So it does draw your eye to that. And um, yeah, quite simple to knit as well. So I think it would be, this would probably be quite a good beginner pattern. It's not too involved. Um, both the repeat, uh, the patterns on the front and the back are only, is it only four row repeats, I think? Yeah, only four rows to remember. So it's quite easy to remember and intuitive. Um, and again, I'm doing these 
socks. Um, I'm including instructions for both toe up and cuff down um, construction because I know a lot of people do prefer cuff down. Um, although I myself, I'm a toe up person. So, um, but yeah, I don't want to leave people out. So um, the only thing to note would be that this chevron points in the opposite direction if you do the cuff down version, but that's the only difference. Just because of the way this stitch is worked, you can't really reverse it. So it's just, your chevrons will point down instead of up. <laughs> so, but yeah, um, really pleased with those. And um, I absolutely love knitting them as well. The yarn is just so fun to knit. And um, I've never found a beehive yarns colorway that I don't love. So that's why I thought when I saw she had the Mad Men Club, um, I was like, well, A, I love Mad Men, and B, I love Beehive Yarns, so what could go wrong? <laughs> okay, so those are all of the FOs that I have. Um, so moving on to some whips. And I've got three of those to show you, I think, today. So leading on from the socks, I've got the next um, sock pattern in the collection, just only just started uh, living here in my Socks for Dobby bag, which I absolutely love. Um, I've always got to have a sock project in this. So I finished those socks yesterday and immediately cast on the toe for the next pair. And they're living in the same bag. So, let me see. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, the bag is by QB's Not For Profit. I'll include a link uh, down below. Because I think I found the Etsy shop quite hard to find from just searching, so I'll include the link. Ooh. Right, so the second, um, I think this is an acquisition as well actually. I don't think I'd shown you the March um, Beehive Yarns Club. So yeah, spoilers. Right, so this is the March colorway from the Beehive Yarns Mad Men Club. And this one was called Betty. So obviously I am designing the Betty socks with this one. Um, I absolutely love how summery and bright this is. And that's why I was so excited to cast it on as well. <laughs> I had it caked up just as I was, um, just before I cast off those socks. I thought, I'll cake it up ready. And uh, hopefully, this is doing the colour justice. But yeah, it is super bright. There are some sort of almost neon speckles in here. And I absolutely love it. So I've got, I've been playing around with some design ideas um, and I've ripped back at the moment because I've, I've settled on an idea and I'm about to start knitting it. So um, I'll just show you the toe for now. And this is how it's knitting up so far. I absolutely love it. I'll show you the back because that's not got the progress keep on. I love these um, sort of green sections as well. I just love it. So yeah, super excited to carry on knitting this later and finalize the design. Um, so yeah, this one's gonna be a lot more, I think it's gonna be sort of flowery. <clears throat> Sorry, if you can hear next door's dog barking. Um, I think they've got a puppy round today, so hopefully you can't hear that too much. Sorry, my throat. I obviously just don't talk very much normally. Being a bit of an introvert, I normally don't talk much, <laughs> so. This just sort of gives my voice a proper workout whenever I podcast. 
my, my throat was just not used to it at all. Anyway, I forgot what I was saying. Yes, this one, it's going to be inspired by Betty, who is very feminine. She wears stunning dresses, a lot of floral prints. Um, she wears a lot of pearls and um, a lot of like sparkly jewellery as well. So it's going to be quite glam and pretty, but in a very classic, elegant way. Makes sense. That's what I'm trying to embody with this sub. <laughs> yeah, so. And then the third colourway, I think it was the January colourway, um, and I didn't bring that down with me, but it's the. Is it called Megan? No, it wasn't called Megan, I've forgotten. What was it called? Do I have it written down? I didn't write down the colourway, but third pattern is going to be inspired by Megan, who is much more of a sort of like, well, hippie-ish, not a very glam hippie, much more modern, um, 70s prints, wears a lot of sort of like, uh, mini dresses um, and bold colours. Yeah. Don't know if I'm explaining that very well. But for now, I'm focusing on Betty. So we've got Peggy and then Betty. <laughs> and then it'll be Megan later. So, yeah. Pop this away. And move on to the next whip. Okay, so the next whip is living in my unseasonally appropriate <laughs> Christmas winter project bag um, but I just love it so much and the project started in this bag so it just shows I'm taking forever to knit this one and this you will have seen before but I'm not sure how many episodes go I don't think I've shown it for a couple of episodes so I've done quite a bit more I think since I last showed it to you. Um, but I'm just taking my time with this and not rushing too much. This is my new shawl design. And I'm using yarn from Kinsman Yarn Co. Ooh. Ooh, it's gonna get so blown out. You can sort of see it's got these gorgeous speckles, very subtle. Such a delicate colour. Oh, there you go. It's just so pretty. I love it. So, just get the label. Here we go. Kinsman Yarn Co. And um, lovely Tony is based down in Australia. And the Base is the Kinsman Merino fingering and colourway is Hepburn. Just so, so pretty. Love it. And it's 100% uh, superwash merino. So, let's see if I can show you. Might help if I show you the front, not the back. <laughs> Make sure I'm doing that. So yes, here we go. This is how big it is now. So it's a two skein shawl. I am now onto the second skein. So that little marker is, I think, where I was up to the last time I showed this to you. So it was only a baby, really, the last time. And now it's sort of the size of a shawlette. This on. So I'm thinking I may write this pattern as two sizes because um, I've I can obviously tell where I got up to with the first skein. So I might make it a suitable for a one skein shawlette as well as um, a two skein bigger shawl. 
and then um, you've got sort of like two options. It's a bit more flexible then. So, yeah, if you can see. So yeah, I think it would be all right as a one skein shawlette. Um, because sometimes you just want a quicker project or if it's for a gift, um, you just want to use one skein, um, that might be easier. So I think the one skein version will end around here. So, and then it'll just be a little shawlette. Yes, I've got still got quite a way to go on this. Not sure how many more repeats. I think I'm going to do a couple more lace repeats. And uh, yeah, I'll try and show you it a little bit closer. Oh, sorry. So, we've just got this lace section which repeats throughout the shawl. And um, a lot of garter, which is very relaxing to knit. I like to have a lot of garter in my shawl designs. And some little eyelets as well, just to keep it interesting. So I've tried to keep the lace repeats um, fairly short, just so it's not overwhelming. And I quite like how the pattern regularly changes, so you're not stuck in one section for too long, and it sort of keeps it interesting. So this is really my main focus now because it's taken me so long. I'm so sorry, Tony. I've been so slow with this design. Um, but I like to think that the things that take the longest are worth waiting for, hopefully. So, yeah, so excited. Oh, I forgot to say, this little progress keeper is from Hannah of the Corner of Craft. He's so cute. I think I did name him once, but I've forgotten his name. <laughs> so yeah, let me know what you think. Um, if you would, if you think you would like um, two size options for this shawl included in the pattern, um, do you think it would be good to have the shawlette version as well? Let me know in the comments. I would be interested to hear your thoughts. Okay. Right, I'll pop this away and then we've got one more whip to show you. I say we, but Jonah's not really helping at all, he's just sleeping. <laughs> so the last whip is my Dust of Snow, which I have picked up again after a little while. Um, and it's living in my Mrs. Brown's bag, which I just love because it's easy to just shovel the minis in. Um, it's great for a scrappy project. Um, and it could fit the, uh, the actual shawl in as well. So I can't remember where I was up to the last time I showed you this, but I know I've definitely done a few more colours since, and I haven't shown it for a while. So I thought, why not? I'll show you this one. Although now it's getting pretty big, and it's going to be quite difficult to show the full length of it. I think I'm up to colour, am I up to colour 17 now? I think I'm up to colour 17. That's the one I'm currently on. So here we go. Whoa. It's getting blown out so much. There we go. Isn't it huge? It's going to be amazing when it's finished wear. It's so fluffy. So yeah, there's no way I'm going to remember all of the yarns. However, they were all from the same dyer because <laughs> I'm I used my um, I'm using my dandelion and dogwood advent calendar, um, which if you've been watching a while, you will have seen me open them um, through Vlogmas. starts off here. I remember this one's called Popcorn and Cranberries and it's one of my favourites. <sighs> Sorry about that. Jonah just 
went crazy barking because he heard a noise outside. Um, so then I had to carry out a full investigation um, on his behalf and assure him that the noise was nothing to be upset about. So I was trying to show you all the colours of the shawl and then he just barked right in the middle of it. So I'm going to start again. Here we go. I love how it's sort of graduating just through the spectrum of colours, but it's not like a, a rainbow, it's just sort of, they sort of do work together. And then this is, oh, this is what I want to do. Right, so, my marker is here, so I'm guessing that's where I was when I last showed you. And I've done three colours since then. I believe this one might be called I Smell Snow. I can't remember now. Um, this one that I'm currently doing is definitely called Yale Daily News. Because it's sort of like got little speckles of grey. It's like the newspaper print. Which is quite cool. So yeah, it's just such a relaxing knit. So I sort of use this as a bit of a break from designing um, when I don't have the headspace um, to work on something a bit more complicated. I'm just sort of, this is sort of my guilty pleasure in it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, loving it. It's so lovely to squish. Just so squishy. <laughs> oh, getting floof everywhere now. Oh. I'm gonna be sneezing. Oh, and the yarns are all sparkly as well. Did I say that? Did you see? Can you see how sparkly they are? And this halo. Oh yeah, the mohair I'm using is Drops Kid Silk. I think this is around Two ninety nine a ball in pounds um, for fifty grams, so quite uh, reasonable as far as a mohair goes. So yeah, I'm just using a, their plain white with this because I thought I'm using so many different colours um, that that would be a good idea to so the colours can be shown off properly. So yeah. That was my last whip that I'm going to show you. I have also put a tiny bit of work on my Spectre sweater, um, which I'm knitting using um, a fade set from Mr. B's yarn. Um, I think they're just rust fade. Oh, sorry. Um, but I don't think I've made enough progress to really show it on the podcast. And if I show everything that I've been working on, Gonna end up like three hours long, so <laughs> right, that's it for whips. So, I've got a little bit of spinning to sh show you and talk about, and then we're almost done. So, I think last time I spoke to you, I had I finished the cat and sparrow, and I was my co my spin that I was spinning at the time was pixie yarns. Um, in the Three Friends colourway. 
and I have now finished that spin. Um, it's plied, washed, dried and everything and skeined up and I'm so pleased with it. Here it is. I just love it so much. I'm so proud of myself. I feel like it looks like a real hand spun. I just love how it's sort of barber pulled in places. I just love it. These bits are amazing. That bit. Perfect. And this was 100% merino. Oh, focus. There we go. So yeah, it's 100% merino and it's pixie yarns in the Three Friends um, colourway. Um, and what did I get? I have tried to figure out how many yards and metres I've got from this. I believe I've got around 266 yards out of it, um, which would be 244 metres. So I wound it around the nitty noddy and uh, then counted how many strands I've got. So I think that makes it sort of a DK to sport weight, I think. So it's probably, it's still a little bit thick and thin in places. So obviously that's quite chunky, but then you've got some thinner areas as well. So it all evens out, doesn't it? love it so much. So I'm not sure what my plans are for this yarn yet, um, other than sitting and looking pretty until it finds the right project. Um, I have got one project that I'm spinning for at the moment and I'm not sure whether to include this in it. So this is moving into acquisitions now, slash current spinning. The current fibre that I'm spinning I ordered three different colours from uh, John Arvin on their Harvest Hues base and I'll show you them all together. Ta -da! These are the three I ordered. Um, so this was for the shift cowl um, that I want to spin for. So I thought these three colours would go quite nicely, but then this would go nicely I think. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Because you only need three colours and I don't want to waste lots. It's either that or I spin for the full shift, night shift, sure. However that would that would need. I don't know how many colours you need for that. Maybe if I just check the yardage. And then just make sure I have enough yardage for it. I don't know. I just quite like the way this looks with the purple. And I think it goes with this too. And then, I don't know. Help. <laughs> I suppose it'll be easier to decide once they're all spun up. Um, Hmm. Let me try and just. So I think those three go together quite nicely. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Um. Yeah. Let me know what you think. I'm going to keep spinning anyway. Uh, the current one, one I've started with is this one. And this is their Bramble colourway. And I just love how rich and deep the colours are. Beautiful. Um, so that's Bramble. Then we've got Barley, which is this one. So 
Sorry, that was my phone. Someone forgot to put it on silent. That's um, Barney. And then the last one I think is Blue Spruce. So pretty. I love it. And I believe this has got sparkles in it, which sort of sold me on the harvest hues. And that's what gives it a sort of darker depth to the colour. Um, you can sort of see it in here. The Zvarbles is the dark, yeah, the dark hairs, if you can see. I love it. So, yeah. So yeah, that's my current spin, and I'm aiming for a sport weight, if I can. So, a little bit thinner than this. And then, so yeah, I'll have a bit more yardage with me. Anyway, that's it for spinning. I've just got one more acquisition. I've just got one more acquisition to show you. And this was an unplanned acquisition, as they often are with me. Um, but I've had an idea in my head for a while um, for a sweater out of this colour and I really wanted a non-superwash base and something a bit more different in terms of the wool. I didn't want just a superwash merino nylon as I normally go for. Um, and I saw this colourway on Woolly Mammoth yarns and uh, I couldn't not buy it. I just, I haven't tried any of her yarn before and I've, I've been wanting to um, for the longest time. And uh, yeah, I finally caved and uh, this is what I got. So I've sort of got an idea for a botanical inspired sweater design in this but this is probably going to be years off in the making just because I'm a bit scared of designing garments so um, I think my first garment I've got in mind is going to be a t-shirt not out this yarn which I'm hoping to get started on this year but um, as you can see I'm quite preoccupied with socks and shawls <laughs> um, I need to step out of my comfort zone and Get into garment designing because I do love knitting garments. I think it's just um, the different construction methods. I think just because there's so many different construction methods and um, you then have to grade the patterns, I'm just a bit... there's obviously a lot more involved in designing a garment than the things I currently design. So I'm a bit apprehensive about it but I really would like to have a go and um, yeah, start small, just take it one step at a time, that sort of thing. So yeah, anyway, this is what I bought, um, which is unrelated to that. I love the label as well, it's so pretty. So I believe all of um, her yarns are naturally dyed and this is the BFL Gotland 4-ply, which is 75% BFL, 25% Gotland. And um, it is the Spindrift Light colourway. I just love it. I just had this sort of muted greeny blue in my head. Um, it's the exact colour I had in mind for this design. Um, so I just need to crack on really and uh, get on with it. I need to spend less time on Instagram and more time knitting. <laughs> so yeah, I got three of these. Um, does, did I say? Oh yeah, so each one is 100 grams and you get 350 meters. I can't remember what that is in yards. Might be around 380 yards. Not sure. I'm not a calculator thing. They're just 
just so pretty. I think the way I need to think of designing is I'm just making something that I want to wear and then if it works out I can then turn it into a pattern because I think then there'll be less pressure on myself. Um, yeah. I'm just looking at the variation in the colour because it's sort of a tonal but there are little nuances and That's the only other acquisition I had to show you. It doesn't mean to say I haven't got more in the post, <laughs> but I had a birthday, so I think it was fair. <laughs> I think I was allowed a, a wee purchase. So that's all I've got to show you today. Um, I've no I I blah, 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 blah. I've no idea how long this podcast this episode has ended up being. Um but if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Um I really, really appreciate everyone that watches the podcast, um, everyone that likes the episodes um and subscribes. It means so much to me. And um yeah. Super excited. Right. Um I will leave it here and speak to you all again next time. Um, don't forget the Peggy socks will be out this weekend coming, um, so if you are interested in buying those I will announce a discount code on my Instagram page, so make sure you follow me over there if you're interested in that. Um, I haven't decided what the code will be yet so that's why I haven't put it on here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, until next time, I hope you all have a lovely couple of nitty weeks and I'll speak to you again soon.